uh, I would like to present myself as a mathematician, and mathematician like to have proofs and to have something which is really sound when they speak of facts, there is, these are facts, and they would not invent something new. And I spent most of my career in France as the director of the main uh, laboratory of statistics in the University of Paris 6 du Sieu by proving theorems and also working in uh, for pharmaceutical firms just in the clean way, which means that it, the idea is to prove that a drug is efficient or not efficient. And there I began to see things, and recently I was involved in a quarrel concerning one of our other speakers of the session, is Professor Serralini. And it turns out that I discovered that the Academy of Science was completely corrupt by the lobby, and people were, in fact, uh, taking the publication of Eric Serralini on uh, the Monsanto maze. Uh, I believe it's 503, and okay, but who, the, the number is not important. He essentially, Professor Serranini will speak about his own work, and he uh, decided, he showed that the, the genetically modified maize and the associated pesticide were toxic in the sense that they provoke cancer. And this study interests me very much because most of the studies to prove that something is toxic or not toxic are uh, sometimes completely absurd. I mean, if you find a product which is toxic, you would like to prove that it is toxic and you don't do this if you take 50 rats and you keep them and they're in the box for a few weeks, and then you find out that none of them has got sick. So you say, logically, the product which was given to the half of the rat is not toxic. That, that tip, would be typically the way people, uh, industry does to uh, put its product in the market. And then I found that at this time, people, in, some member of the Academy of Science try to make a harsh judgment against Professor Serralini's work, and in fact saying that it was not worth anything, just without even looking at the data. And I find this absurd, and I got involved in this uh, this quarrel. I proved myself that I can testify with, by mathematical methods that Professor Serralini's analysis is significant in the statistical sense at a, with a degree of confidence uh, higher than 99%. So you can have my word for that, but even it's not more than a word. I published a paper on this in a refereed uh, uh, support. So because of this, I'm here today. And I was very much concerned about some facts, which I will give in a few minutes in the, uh, my lecture. But I, I, was, I had really the witness that the, uh, even uh, a very, I would say, serious uh, a serious group like the Academy of Science could be corrupted by lobbying. And I have some other example I would give later, but it turns out that science is maybe corrupted. Uh, fortunately, not all. Uh, politics may be corrupted. Fortunately, possibly not all. And uh, the, there are the very action, I would say, a strong action of lobbies which would pay for anything to get more benefits. And we will speak of this in a few minutes. And I believe it's a serious issue because you cannot trust anybody. Uh, you will see that uh, example of, uh, you know, groups, example of academy, example of parliament, example of government, example of commission you, where you, are, you find a, a, an enormous number of conflict of interest shows you that the citizens that we are 
must get concerned about this and really act to stop all that. And you cannot trust anybody, That's, uh, especially scientists. That's what I want to say as an introductory statement. Okay. Uh. Okay, then I will give my presentation. Now, uh, this presentation, you have the, the most of the resume or the contents of the presentation in France. And I would like to get to basic fact. The fact is that in about 30 years, the number of cancers in France has more than doubled. And the question is why? And naturally, you have different types of cancer. You have the cancer, lung cancer, which is provoked by smoking, essentially. And you have the cancer which depend of uh, perturbator endocrinien, which is endocrine, endocrine, endocrine disruptors. disruptors. OK, so endocrine disruptors. And one of the typical type of cancer, which is possibly caused by this type of product, is the cancer, which uh, the cancer of uterus, uh, the prostate, and te testis. And most of these cancers represent about 150,000 new cases each year in France. And steadily, during the 30 last years, the number of cancer, if you take out the factor of the population, is increasing by a little more than 3% a year. It's enormous. And in fact, if you take facts, basic facts, for example, uh, based on about 400,000 new cases of cancer each year in France, and getting up by 3% each year. It's really a very big problem to find out whether the French uh, medical system would be able to get hold of this and cure people. Uh, globally, you can have a very rough guess by saying each cancer cost to the medical system about 50,000 euro to get cured or eventually by ending up to the disease of the cancer, people who have cancer. And roughly, again, this is a very rough uh, estimation, about one half of the people will uh, be cured or will have a long-term survival. So if you just get simply uh, you know, a, a small uh, uh, a sheet of paper and you make the calculus, 400 thousand new cases of cancer today, it's, it's, it's rough, it's probably 395 or four, but I don't want to get a very precise figure. 3% increasing each year, $50,000 by cancer. I mean, what would be the cost in 20 years? You end up to figures like 100 billion euros to cure this, why well, actually I can give you a, a figure which you can find e e everywhere. The price paid by the French system each year is about 15 billion euro to cure cancer. Now, uh, what I say, if nothing changes in a few years, say 20 years, we will perhaps be at 100 billion euros, and it means that we'll be in a huge deficit. I don't know how France can pay that. And the question is, what are the causes of this cancer? And here we are getting to serious problems, because there is one probable, probable cause, which is the endocrine uh, oh, excuse me. Disruptors. And the, especially the ones who are uh, uh, present in the environment. Now, there are serious, uh, a series of paper who tend to prove this. But it's extremely difficult to prove, in fact, for all the endocrine disruptors. Why? Because if you want to do this, you have to act like Professor Seralini. I mean, take a strain of rats and consider them for their lifetime, which is about two years young. And most studies are based on a few weeks or three months at most. So you cannot 
you cannot prove that a product will cause cancer if you don't study a big number of animals for a long period. And the same is true for humans, because for humans, you just have a, a kind of indirect proof. You know that some products are extremely toxic, and they are present in the environment in small doses. But to prove that this, these products have caused cancer is extremely difficult. You have the indirect proof. The number of cases of cancer is increasing fact. But what causes this cancer? Because it, sometimes it takes 20 years to uh, start a cancer. Like people who smoke, they can smoke for 30 years and then some people will get cancer and some people will never get cancer. And then if you want to prove that smoke is, is really a factor for lung cancer, you have to work hard. Naturally, today it's considered as a fact. But there are a, a very strong lobbies. I would cite the lobby for asbestos. Abestos uh, has caused in France about 100,000 dead people who were killed because of the cancer caused by abestos. And it, it, for years, I've heard some serious people, some academician, for example. I could cite one of these academician. I will not give his name, but people will identify him. is a specialist of volcanoes in Academy of Science. Or not too many, and you can identify. And this uh, very, uh, it's, he, the fact is that this member of our academy is also a member of the National Academy of Science in the US. He's a very strong and well-known scientist. And for years, this person has said that abestos was not a danger for nobody. So you could put asbestos everywhere on the walls. You could, you know, brass it. It's just, there's no danger at all. And naturally, this is, we know that this is not true. And some years later, there were proofs that this man was paid by the lobby of asbestos people. What? Excuse me? No, but you, you can find out. I will not give names because the, the, what I want to mention is that you have a, a very strong and famous scientist, which is a serious scientist because to be elected in two different academies is at least an indirect proof. And this guy was saying, abestos, you can eat it, you know, you can breast it, nothing happens. And you find out that later on that he was paid by the syndicates of, of asbestos industry. That's, that's something interesting. So you cannot trust many people about that. Now, the fact is that uh, there is a second problem, that the endocrine, uh, oh, excuse me, I have a endocrine disruptor. disruptors. Endocrine disruptors uh, have a very weird property that, you know, small doses may be more effective in causing cancer or some disease than strong dose. There seems to be a, a, a fact that a characteristic of these disruptors that at small dose, they have strong effects. At a big dose, there is some kind of neutralization going on. And at least the classical rule you use in statistics to evaluate the effect of a product which is simply the dose proportional principle, which means you know, a product at dose one has this type of effect. If you have dose two, multiply dose two, it will have twice the same effect, three, three times the same effect. And this dose proportional principle is not satisfied. Now, this is very weird. There are some reasons who explains this, and I will not go inside this reason, but you can see that it causes problem to everybody, including people who want to treat the problem seriously. Let me cite the European Commission. They have spent years to try to define properly what is an endocrine disruptor, and they are still, you know, 
turning around because uh, we some people have spoken about the reach system the reach system is a program who wishes in european community to define for each chemical product the no observe adverse level the NOAEL, which means that it's a level below which there would be no identified effect. I mean, essentially, if you have this product in the environment below this dose, you cannot see anything. Now, it's exactly the, the contrary you have with endocrine disruptors. At small dose, they will have big effects, and at large dose, the effect would become in some way neutralized. And this makes a great difficulty in, you, in defining and making regulation for this effect. But the fact is that, in fact, uh, it's a, a real problem, and for some of these disruptors, they are dangerous at the level of one molecule which may eventually cause cancer at an individual. And these, these products should be evidently be banned. And we have to put pressure at this because some industrial want to use the fact that it's difficult to define to still uh, you know, make experiment with 50 rats and uh, during three weeks or so and say you cannot see anything, therefore the product is safe. So we have to put pressure against this. And uh, the, to just to conclude, because my time is limited, I would like to mention, because I have to be very cautious in putting accusation. I could tell you that this commission is corrupt, okay? If I say this, I might be put on trial because people will say, can you prove it? So I will just cite Le Monde, which is a French newspaper everyone knows here, of October 14, 2013. And he, he was speaking of the EFSA, which is the European Agency of Security of, um, of Food, Food Security. And it showed that 59% of the expert employed by this agency has some conflict of interest and were paid by industry. And if you look at the dietical product, nutrition and allergy, it is, uh, 17 out of 20 of the member of this commission had for 70, 17 people, 100 conflict of interest. Some, uh, some members of this agency had three or four conflict of interest, which means that we're multiply paid. You know, we are f f f speaking of multiple calls, but you have multiple lobby and multiple funding for the expert. So it means that you cannot trust anybody. And you have to take the example of the tobacco industry paying people to show that you can smoke without any kind of danger. The abestos, I cite already, to show that you cannot trust anybody, you cannot trust any politician, you cannot trust assembly, commission. You have to fight against all these people to get through and stop this pollution. Thank you very much. I have to stop because my time is limited, but thanks to your action, probably something can be done. Okay. <clears throat>